Hi all, and welcome back. In the last video, I cut pretty much the whole front of the Forenza off, and after quite a lot of repair to the bulkhead and the chassis legs, we were left with something like this, ready to start reattaching those front end panels. So anyone who owns one of these old voxels can tell you, getting replacement parts, panels especially, is not like shopping at Tesco. Luckily enough, over the last 10 years or so of watching auction sites and forums, I managed to snag a new front panel and a pair of inner wings. I had all of these blast clean and phosphate coated, and I've also given them a decent coat of primer. Now, ideally I would have skipped the primer step until after I had all the panels welded on, but in this case I knew the shell would be sitting outside, albeit under a cover, so having as much of the body protected with the primer as possible before welding day came around meant that I only have a few areas to do before sundown. So once I got all the holes drilled for plug welds, the panels clamped where they needed to go, and a nice sunny day, I cracked on with the welding. And so after I think it was about 155 plug welds, a decent bit of sunburn, and some burns from welding in a t-shirt all day like a numpty, the front end's back on and it's good and solid. So I've got a bunch of welds to clean up and give a coat of paint, and a bit of seam sealing to do, but then it's time to start dealing with that really big hole I cut in the firewall. So I started off like any good fabrication project should, by messing about with some cardboard and tape. I had made a little bit of a guide out of welding wire last time I had the transmission in, so I'm just trying to work to that whilst giving myself as much room for headers as possible. And of course, once I was happy with the shape, the next step was to transfer it over some metal sheet. So here I'm using 1.2mm. It's a little bit thicker than most of the bodywork on the car, but I figured as this is one of the more structural areas, it wouldn't hurt to make it a bit stronger. Now 
next up was to use the sheet metal folder to replicate the bends from my card template. And using one of these little digital angle finders here was definitely a cheat code. But even with that, I still managed to bend it a little bit too far and have to bend it back again. <laughs> And yep, I think that's pretty close to the template. As this design is just eyeballed, as most of mine are, I decided it'd be a good idea to chuck this bit in the shell before I carried on. And with just a couple of clamps to hold it in, I could see that it was clearing the wire guide, so that meant it should, in theory, clear the transmission. So the last thing to do was just to mark out those fill-in pieces and chop them out with the plasma cutter. Now there was no real need to use this tool. Sheet this 1.2mm, I can cut with tin snips, but this is a new toy I figured I could do with the practice. And of course, plasma cutters are great fun. Here's my fill-in piece to go in the bulkhead or firewall, whatever you like to call it. I try to do as much of it as possible with bends just to make it you know, a bit easier on the welding. So next up I'm gonna put this, lightly tack it in and then refit the engine and the transmission there and just make sure everything clears where it should. You can see there I've got a new like flexible transmission dipstick so I haven't tried anything with the dipstick in. Hopefully there's enough room under here for it to come up and clear. But let's throw this in the car and find out. Overall the fit's pretty good. There's a couple of little gaps around the side here and there's a little bit of overhang which I can trim off. But that's nothing serious and I'll be able to deal with it when it comes to the final welding. I knew that I was going to be putting the engine in the shell and taking it out again a ton of times over the course of the build. So to make my life a little easier, I modified my engine stand so I could keep the engine and transmission mounted to the cross member just like they would be in the car and move them around as a unit. So that combined with eBay's finest lifting bracket that mounts in place at the valley cover, it made getting the engine in and out a pretty simple one man job. With nothing at all in the shell, the front end was actually really, really light. So it was dead easy just to kick a stand out and drop it down. And even with the factory engine and gearbox combination, fitting the engine and the cross member together up from underneath is so much easier than going in through the top on these cars. It's just a case of lifting the whole unit with the engine hoist, making sure you get the bolts lined up with the holes in the cross member, and job's good. And there we are, it fits, it clears everywhere, never in any doubt, right? And of course, I couldn't resist throwing the headers and a few other bits back on. 
just so I could imagine how it's all going to look when it's finished. I don't know about you, but I think that looks cool as hell in there. This thing's going to be awesome when it's done. So that's where we're going to finish off for today's video. And just as I thought, even with that little E36 radiator, there's not much room in front of the engine. So I think that's what we're going to tackle next time. So as always, if you're enjoying the build, please take a moment to subscribe and leave me a like. And if you've got a good idea, or maybe even seen something I've done that is totally stupid and is probably going to bite me in the arse later, do me a favour and leave me a comment. So until next time, thanks for watching.